All right, Shalom Akiyam, all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachapadash, double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akiyam worldwide who are doing the work of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, in truth, faith, sincerity, and in the grace of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. So, this is Brother Tazapai, and I want to do a follow up to a previous lesson I did entitled, um, But by the Grace of of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, but you'll see it as but by the grace of God if you uh, go to my YouTube videos. So this is a follow-up because uh, I wanted to touch on the parable of the talents and just go into why Yahweh Shah was so mad, why he was so upset with this particular servant who buried his, his talent in the sand. In other words, he didn't do anything with it. And it's, it's all going into grace because we know that the talents are gifts in the spirit, gifts through the spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, which comes through grace. So what we want to do here is go to Matthew 25 and uh, we're going to start at the 14th verse. OK, so this is Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods, right? And his servants are the prophets, you know? Let's see if, if I can find that real quick. Because this is talking about the kingdom. It's talking about Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and the kingdom of heaven. So let's get that straight. So these servants... Or us, those of us who are doing the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So uh, this is uh okay, here we go. All right. This is the book of let's see here. Book of Amos, chapter three, verse seven. It says, Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So the servants of the Lord are the prophets. So when we read in Matthew and it speaks about the servants, understand that it's talking about those, his apostles who he sent forth to prophesy. All right. So again, Matthew 25 and 14, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So Yahweh left. He left us, but he said what? He said, I will not leave you comfortless. And what did he do? He left us far when he went on that far journey to sit at the right hand of the Father. He sent the Holy Spirit by the grace of Yahweh. Okay? So, heaven is that far country. The, the most high is heaven. He went to sit at the right hand of the throne of power. All right? So it says, and this is this is all an allegory or, or an analogy of just that. Okay, so verse 15, it says, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Because that's what exactly what Yahweh Shah did. You know, so uh, it says, verse 16, then... He that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his, his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. So before I move on, I'm going to look at John. I want to jump over to the book of John real quick and see if uh, I can find that passage. All right. So um, okay. So like you. Here we go. But you notice. All right. It, it mentioned money when you go back to uh, verse. Verse 18. 
Matthew chapter 25, verse 18. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. OK. So just keep that in mind. And I want to find this. Uh, Okay, uh, this this kind of hits on it. All right, so we're gonna go to the book of Saint John, and this is uh, oh, you know what? Uh-huh. Yeah, we're going to go to St. John 14 and 1. All right. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in, in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If, if it were not so, I would not told, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And, and whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And uh, okay, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to jump down. Uh, we're going to go jump down to verse 15. And the Lord said, if ye love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. So, uh, yeah, and that's what I want to bring out is that, yeah, Yahweh Shai had to go to fulfill what he had to fulfill. He had to take care of his business and fulfill prophecy to go to sit at the right hand of the father. But he told the, his disciples in us, in his word, that he would not leave us comfortless, okay? And so he sent the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, so that we could be comforted in this wicked, God-forsaken world. You know, the Lord did not leave us comfort, comfortless, and we take comfort in the Holy Spirit, in the word of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, in this truth. And now, going back to Matthew Remember, it mentioned the money. It said he hid his Lord's money, right? So now I want to go into the book of Romans 11 and 33. And just so you can understand, the Lord wouldn't, he wasn't irate with the guy just over money. Because all things belong to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh put all things under Yahweh Shai's feet. So you think he's going to sweat money? Is it talking about literal money, silver, gold, whatever, cattle, whatever you want to uh, think of or name? No. It was, it was more than that. Now, this is Romans chapter 11, verse 33. And it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. How unsearchable are his judgments. And his ways past finding out. So, right, the money that was given is the knowledge of the Lord's word through the grace that was bestowed upon this particular individual who took that one talent of grace and did nothing with it. He just did nothing with it. He took it and buried it. You understand? And so what I was speaking on in the in the uh, the lesson, but by the grace of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, is that how we have to take advantage of this grace, or we gonna find ourselves 
at the wrath of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Now going back to Matthew 25, uh, verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckon it with them. And this is the time that we hasten the Lord's return. He's coming back. That the Lord is coming back and he's going to reckon with us. He already know what's going on. But then, you know, he might want to hear it from your mouth. What, what, what have you been doing? I gave you these talents. What have you been doing? You got mad at my servants because they told you to do three videos? Or you got mad at my servants because they rebuked you? And then so you went and hid your talent? Because see, you, you, you have to understand. That servant could have did a little something. You know, and, and then you know, at the beginning. And then it was like, eh, you know what? I'm not, you know, I'm not prospering in this. So I'm going to just call it quits and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just... When the Lord come back, I'm going to just give him this talent that he gave me. And so, you know, we don't know. But I do know this, that you can, at one point, be on fire and then go back into the world. Well, then that's burying your talent because it's no longer, it's no longer being used. You're no longer edifying the hopeful elect. So that's bearing in your talent. So it says, uh, verse 20, and so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. So what was he doing? He was out there on the highways and byways, and he was bringing sheep into the fold with his talents, the talents being the gifts of grace that was bestowed upon him. He was out there getting it in. Putting out videos out there on the highways and byways, just doing it, bringing in the elect, you know, helping seal the elect through the most highest word of truth. This is what it's talking about. It says, uh, and so, Okay, verse 21, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He entered into the joy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. How wonderful is that? You see? And the Lord is using the analogy of, of a business because this is business. Going out on the highways and byways, we trading, you know, gifts of the spirit, you know, what you know, you put it out there, another brother don't know, and he learn and he gain, and then he might speak something that you didn't know or the, something that helped edify you, and then you gain, and everybody's being edified. That's that's the business. Those who ain't, don't know anything about the truth, being brought in through your preaching of the gospel. See, that's trading, that's doing business. That's commerce of the spirit. That's spiritual commerce. Those, those riches, that money. Okay? It says, verse 22, He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, well done good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Verse 24 said, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid. What does the scripture tell us about fear? Well, first of all, perfect love cast off all fear. But fear is is a faith blocker, a faith killer. You know, fear kills faith. You can't move in faith and be fearful. 
So here, he went off because, well, he went off because he didn't he didn't utilize the grace that was given, and then he was he was fearful. So grace can be of none effect when you fear. All right. Now I might have read this in the previous lesson, but I'm gonna bring it out again. Because it's just that important. And I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 4. And 14, matter of fact. Also, let me, let, let's get there first. Hebrews 4, all right, uh, 16, 4 and 16. And it says, uh, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. So you got to come boldly to the throne of grace. You know, see, when you in faith, you gonna you gonna have that boldness. It's just like you know, I heard somebody say it's just like you know when you was growing up, and then when it was time to eat, and your mama called you to come eat, or your father, whoever, called you to come eat, you didn't go in that kitchen timid, or you know, like walking on air. You know, maybe if you was in trouble that day, but normally. <laughs> You, you, you know, you went boldly to that, to that dinner table looking for your food because, it, you know, you expected that. Well, it's the same way when you approach the throne of grace, you got to know that this is yours, that it belongs to you. And that's how you have to approach it. Like, yeah, I know this is for me. I know this is my, where my grace at. Abba. I'll be happy with my grace because I'm, I'm stepping up in faith, you know. So, again, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. See, the Lord ain't going to be merciful to a timid, frightful, you know, man. The Lord ain't finna show you mercy and you, you timid and, and, and frightened. Because we out here at war, we're doing battle. It says, uh, let us come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Find grace to help. See, grace is much more than just a time period to get right. Yeah, it is that. Grace is a time period that was extended unto us to get right, to repent. But then there's so much more. Grace is so much more. Yahusha told Paul that his grace was sufficient for him. And it's sufficient for us. I Meaning sufficient means all you need. That's how grace is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Grace is our all in all. It's our everything. Now, I know I read um, Philippians 4 and 13 in the previous lesson that I can do all things through my siyak, which strengtheneth me. And that's, you know, that's through this grace. That's by the gift of grace. We had a boldness. So, uh, yeah, I want to bring that up. I think I want to go also to 1 Corinthians. First Timothy, so, so like it. As a matter of fact, it might be Second Timothy. Uh, yeah, Second Timothy one and seven, cutting straight to the point. For Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So keep in knowing that. That Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah had not given us the spirit of fear. Where does fear come from? It comes from the enemy. It comes from the left hand, Satan, this devil. So, and it ain't that you, you don't get scared, but you don't operate in fear. Like, you can have a moment where, you know, something might jar you, or you might be nervous about something, maybe a little scared. 
but you rebuke that immediately and you pray to the Heavenly Father for strength, for courage, and for boldness. Because courage is moving forward despite your fear. And this is, this, and this is what this truth is, is doing for us, you know? Now, for the first time I hit the block, you know, man, I was nervous, heart was beating. Let's just put it out there, you know? I was scared. You could say I was fearful, but I didn't let that stop me. You see, I moved forward in the courage of my faith, and I did what was expected of me. And, and hey, it was all downhill from there. You know what I'm saying? But if I'd have let the fear take over, settle in, and control my thoughts and actions, I would have buried my talent. But I wasn't about to do that, you know? Yeah, fear is an emotion. We get fearful. We get scared. It's an emotion that we all experience, you know? But the point is, you don't let fear paralyze you or cause you not to act. Because, again, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That's what he gave us. He gave us power. You understand? We have power. And he gave us love and a sound mind. But fear, yeah, fear comes from the enemy. Anytime fear pops up, because it will pop up, you rebuke it. Pray to the Most High for courage and strength and move forward, okay? So that's what I want. This is where this guy went off. He, he, he admitted to the Lord. He was fearful. So going back to Matthew 25 and uh, it was 26, 25 and 25. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is dying. Yeah, there, thou hast that is thine. You know, and even some brother get they'll get fearful, you know, because they they got rebuked before you know before the congregation, or or a shame. You know, they'll get shameful. No man, you cannot let. Look, we have a job to do. Now the Lord said we would be made a spectacle of. Our Lord Yahweh was made a spectacle. He, he could have copped out. He could have took the easy route. But for our sakes, he endured. And you got guys out there who for Yahweh, well, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah say, don't want to endure, didn't want to endure, and went back into the world where it's comfortable and easy for them. You see, this is, that's, that's burying your talent. And this is verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have straw, not straw. You know, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges and, and them, oh, Salakia, and then at my coming, I should have received mine with usury. And again, it's not talking about money. The Lord wants a return on his gifts of grace. He wants to, he wants a return. He don't want to come back and see you just then sat on what he gave you. He want to come back and see you done been out there doing business, trading, getting it in. You know, you getting down, handling your business. This is what the Lord wants to see. Yeah, I gave you this, and man, wow, you you really, you put in that work. Enter into my joy. But this is what he told that servant who buried his talent. Again, verse 26, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not straw. 
Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine with usury. Usury is going to uh, what they call today. Uh, uh, shoot, it's slipping my mind. Uh, interest. That's all usury is. Interest. Uh, verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which had ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that had not shall be taken away even that which he had. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Lord called him not only wicked and slothful. You see? This is why a lot of guys got offended at three videos because they just wanted to be slothful. But he also called him unprofitable. And I think that's the harshest. You, you don't want to be unprofitable. And sure, you don't want to be wicked either. Of course, you don't want to be wicked. But, man, to be unprofitable, that's like just being useless. You know? So, yeah, we want to be profitable servants, making full use of the grace that was given unto us by Yahweh the Father, through Yahweh Shai and the Holy Spirit. We want to make full use. And that's what I, you know, what I wanted to speak on, you know. And, and you go to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, tell you that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, gives the increase. He don't give you the increase for, you know, to big yourself up or, you know, to promote your name or give yourself the glory and praise. He gives you the increase so that you can go out and bid to the marriage, bid to that wedding feast. And be a profitable servant. So just keep those things in mind, man. And, and I'm going to end this lesson right there. I pray that you brothers are edified. All praises, honor, and glory goes to again. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachapadash. Double honors to the apostles at Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to the Akim out there doing the work. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, and true faith in his sincerity. You brothers stay up, man. Much love. Shalom.